Europe is full of bucket list landmarks and attractions, but the experience that you have at them can be very disappointing without proper preparation. Here are 12 things that I wish I had known before my first time in Europe that are going to set you up to have the best experience on your own trip. I've been to Europe over a dozen times now, and something I wish I had known on my very first trip was to take some time to actually research the places I wanted to go, as opposed to just showing up and expecting a magical experience only to arrive at a construction site. I remember being so disappointed when sites on my bucket list, like the Eiffel Tower, were undergoing major construction at the time that I was visiting. It's great to know things like this in advance to avoid disappointment and make an informed decision on whether or not it's worth visiting at all. Definitely do your research on the official website of the attraction, which may or may not be in English, but the page can be translated. This is a better option than going to a third-party site that might have outdated information. Be sure to take note of things like the opening hours, as well as the price of each ticket. Admission prices may be more expensive than you would expect, so it's definitely good to know what the price is going to be upfront so you can plan your budget accordingly. It's also important to take a look at the list of all of the things that you want to do and then prioritize the ones that you want to do most so you can build it into a realistic and achievable itinerary. The number one mistake that we travelers make on our first trip to Europe is trying to do too much in too little time. A 10-day trip may seem like a lot of time, but it's really not that much time when you factor in things like the fact that you will need to stop and eat and you also have to get between each of the locations on your list. You also will probably be moving a little bit slower than you would hope due to the jet lag. Europe is also an entire continent and there will be a lot of generalizing in this video. It's going to be most helpful for the average tourist that is visiting a popular Western European hotspot like London, Paris, or Milan. Let us know down in the comments which European city or cities you will be going to next. The next thing that you can do to prevent your European vacation from becoming a cautionary tale would be to look online and purchase your tickets to these attractions in advance. Popular European attractions are notorious for their long lines, particularly during peak tourist seasons such as the summer and early fall. Purchasing tickets online in advance is a smart move to not only avoid waiting in a long ticket line, but also to ensure that tickets do not sell out before you have a chance to buy one. I also like to be strategic about when I do things to avoid crowds and have the best experience. You may want to consider planning to hit a major attraction early in the morning or later in the evening, essentially as soon as it opens or shortly before it closes. Keep in mind that the opening hours may vary by day of the week or season, so always check the official website before you head off. It's a great idea to also be aware of and make use of any discounts that you might qualify for. European attractions offer a variety of discounts for seniors, children, and students, which can make a noticeable difference to your budget. Always inquire about these discounts when purchasing a ticket or a pass, even if you clearly fit one of the discount categories, as it might not be offered to you without asking for it. There are also often free or discounted days, such as free entry to the museum on the last Thursday of the month. It's important to be aware of these days, but maybe not for the reason you would think. It sounds tempting to jump on things like free or discounted admission, but usually free days mean extremely busy days. Weigh the pros and cons and decide whether the money saved is going to be worth the potentially worse experience. Some attractions will also offer skip the line or fast pass style of tickets. These tend to be more expensive, but if it's a popular and busy attraction that you are really excited about, it might be worth paying for one of these premium tickets when available. It may also be worth paying a little bit more to opt for a guided tour. Guided tours provide a wealth of information and often uncover hidden gems that you might have missed if you were exploring on your own. I made the mistake of not doing any guided tours on my first trip to Barcelona and I did not appreciate all the cool things that I was seeing because I simply did not understand what they were. If hiring a personal guide or joining one of the group tours is not within your budget, consider audio guides or YouTube videos that offer virtual tours on demand and can walk you through the experience. There are also going to be rules and regulations for any of the sites that you are visiting, and it's a good idea to know these in advance and then to follow them. Some attractions have strict rules about photography including photos taken with your phone. Always respect these rules to preserve the integrity of these sites and to avoid getting into trouble with the local authorities. And just because you may be able to get away with being sneaky and snapping a few photos does not mean that you should. Don't be that person. 
Another set of rules to be aware of would be those related to dress codes, particularly at religious sites. It's a great idea to carry a lightweight shawl that could be draped to cover your shoulders or your legs as needed. And when it comes to getting from site to site, you might not expect it, but often using public transit is going to be the cheapest way and the fastest way to get around. Many European cities have impressively efficient public transit systems. Consider using buses, trams, and trains to commute between attractions. It all just becomes part of the experience. Definitely check out the free app Omeo for a comprehensive and convenient way to compare routes and prices. Something else that you might not expect during your European vacation would be to go into your backpack only to find that your wallet, or worse, your passport, is missing. Popular tourist spots are full of scam artists and pickpockets. Exercise caution when approached by strangers, don't accept anything for free, those roses are not free, and then only carry the essentials. You also might want to check out a video that I have in the description with anti-theft tips and hacks for Europe. Hopping between sites can be quite exhausting, and when you do eventually get hungry, be sure to avoid any of the restaurants that are directly outside of a famous site. These restaurants that are aimed at tourists are often overpriced without very good value for your money. There are so many amazing food experiences that you can have when you know what to look for and what red flags to avoid such as seeing a menu with no prices. But I'll dive into all of those tips and those red flags in another video. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Megan, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to join us back here for weekly travel tips and hacks. Bye.